Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Can I apologise first of all for this uh, video going out a little bit late? It's been a rather hectic weekend work-wise and uh, I've not managed to uh, achieve as much as I would have liked. Um, I'm looking this week at uh, DX film or DX encoding, um, a subject that confuses some new uh, film photographers and even some that have been doing it for a while. So let's take a look and hopefully answer some of your questions. In a nutshell, DX encoding is a combination of three codes all right the film manufacturer can use those codes then to pass on automatically information to anyone developing the film uh, printing the results uh, and indeed us photographers um, by way of passing information to the camera that we're using it was originally developed by Kodak back in 1983, and although um, Ilford uh, had um, attempted a similar type of system previously to that in the late 70s, it was the Kodak one that really took off. They were determined to actually uh, make it the standard so all manufacturers of film uh, would use this system. And in fact, that has pretty much happened. Most films today you get, 35 millimeter films you get are uh, DX encoded. So here we have a roll of 35mm film. This is uh, Roly uh, RPX 400 as you can see and uh, most photographers um, would, even if they're not familiar with the film, could look on the side and you can see here that it's um, ISO or ASA 400. Uh, there's 36 exposures. Uh, that it's black and white, negative film, etc, etc. Pretty much all the information that you'd need to know before using it. Now, in addition, this film is a DX film. We can often tell that by a little DX logo somewhere on the canister, although Roly so don't seem to have bothered printing it on there. But take my word for it, it's a DX film. DX stands for uh, Digital Index. And basically what it is, as I said to you, is a combination of three codes. If we roll this over, we can see the first one here a barcode, um, often called the cartridge code or the DX cartridge code, etc. Uh, and this is to pass on information about this film to an automatic uh, processing uh, system, um, auto photo finishing, whatever you want to call it, so that developing of the film is done correctly. Um, this barcode actually um, represents a few different things. There's a, a DX number, which is kind of like an ID. Uh, there's details about the number of exposures, uh, which manufacturer processed, yeah, produced it rather, all that type of stuff. So that's the, uh, the cartridge barcode. The second code in the system then uh, is this one here. You can't actually see it until the film has been developed. Um, and this is referred to often as the edge barcode or film edge barcode. Um, like I say, once the film has been developed, it comes uh, uh, clear and it can be read then by um, the uh, anybody who's actually printing uh, the frames that have been developed. Um, and it's basically representing um, the frame number and, and all that kind of information. Um, so that's the third part, the edge bar code. The last code then is the one that we're probably most concerned with as photographers. Um, it's known as the CAS or Camera Auto Sensing System. And so basically you have uh, two rows of six squares, so 12 squares in total, that are either silver or black. The silver is bare metal and therefore conducts electricity. The black is coated, uh, it's sort of painted usually, and therefore doesn't conduct electricity. So a little bit like a light switch um, or a binary circuit, if you're familiar with such a thing, um, a square can represent being on or off, silver or black. Okay. Um, we normally read it uh, or normally look at it in terms of uh, human reading it with the, this cap sort of thing on the left-hand side of the film. So this first column here of two squares are always silver. They always conduct electricity because they are the electrical ground for the system. The rest of it then, um, I've done a little diagram here for you with different colours to show you. So the remainder of the top row is representing the speed of the film, the ISO or ASA of the film. Um, you can Google if you want to and look up um, which combination represents which speed. And I know some people actually do trick their cameras by uh, 
um, actually sort of uh, covering over silver squares or scratching off paint to expose them and so on. But effectively, it's the speed of the film. And um, it ranges from, um, I think it's ISO 25 is the slowest one um, it looks at, um, 5,000 being the fastest. On the bottom row then, the first three uh, squares um, they represent the length of the film, in other words, how many exposures uh, the film allows for. Most 35 millimeter films are either 24 or 36, uh, but you can have 12 or 20 occasionally, um, and uh, that's what those three squares represent. The remaining two then on the bottom row, um, they are um, what's known as exposure tolerance. So basically, if you've got... Um, a uh, 400 ASA film, um, usually that film will stand being uh, underexposed by a certain amount or overexposed by a certain amount uh, and still get a decent image and it's just maybe the effect that you're looking for. And so it's explaining there um, to the camera, you know, what the tolerance of this film is. So you might be wondering how on earth the camera reads this barcode. Well, I've got here the Pentax A3 that I featured um, in a recent video. And although there's some dispute, um, I think most people agree that this is actually the first SLR uh, that was produced that could read DX film. Um, and if we flip it over and open it back, oops. In the receptacle here where the film sits when you're loading it up, you can see electrical contacts. And as you can probably tell, there are six of them uh, for the rows. So if I just grab hold of the film again, when the film gets inserted into the camera, these contacts will make uh, a connection with the um, uh, with the barcode. Uh, and so um, the camera um, is an automated camera anyway. It doesn't require you to... Um, uh, set the ASA, it doesn't require you to tell you how many exposures it's got or everything. It's all in there along with uh, any other information it needs. Uh, here we have uh, a Canon Sure Shot, which is a, a point and shoot camera I haven't actually featured in the video yet, but I will do in a future one. Um, if we open the back up on this one, oops. Uh, Again, you can see the contacts, but this time we've only got four. Uh, and the reason for that is simply that the um, uh, once the film is inserted, this camera can't uh, deal with the exposure tolerance. So it's basically missing off uh, the, last, the last row here. Um, so it's a little bit more simple, but obviously it's still, once you insert the film, once it's a DX film, uh, it will set itself up correctly for that film. If I just show you this SLR, which has not got the system, you can see no contacts. So it doesn't really matter whether you put a DX film in here or not. Uh, you'll need to tell the, the system you know, what uh, ASA it is uh, and obviously shoot accordingly. Likewise, if you were to put a non-DX film in a DX equipped camera, you'll find that it will set itself up as a default of something like you know, 200 ASA, etc. So there you go, DX film on DX encoding uh, in a nutshell. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, most films, most 35 millimeter films you're going to buy are be, will be DX. If you don't have a DX camera, it makes no difference to you, and you're probably better off anyway being familiar with speeds of films and, and the effect that has, the look it gives you, etc. Um, if you do have a point and shoot, and you and you just really want to take snaps, uh, and it's a DX model, then obviously look out for DX films because it will certainly save you a lot of hassle. So that's it. Thank you very much uh, once again for watching. Um, please uh, like and subscribe uh, the videos that I produce. Um, really does uh, help help me out a lot. Um, and share them obviously in, in any forums that you think uh, people might find it of interest. I'd be really, really grateful. Um, back to a, a weekend video next week, I promise. And until then, see you soon.